Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Melrose. This morning, we're celebrating the Feast of All Saints and the commemoration of the dead. So this is a special festive occasion here in our church. And for our opening hymn, we invite you to sing in your bulletin, you have the words from hymnal 1982, number 293, I sing a song of the saints of God. Our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins with our opening sentence. Praised be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, Savior, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with, white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. 
And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Psalm appointed today is Psalm 34. We will say it responding after the asterisk. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall never be in my heart. I will glory in the Lord. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. I sought the Lord and he answered me. Look upon him and be radiant. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me. And saved me from all my trusts. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him. And he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack not their The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished to trust in him. A reading from John. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do now is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and 
After he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'd only been in Episcopalian for a year when I walked into St. Gregory of Nyssa's Episcopal Church in San Francisco. The rotunda of their central sanctuary area is filled with brightly painted and gilded life-sized icons of over 90 saints dancing in a two-layer circle of holiness with Christ leading the dance for them all. Growing up as Roman Catholic with the time-honored book, Lives of the Saints, as my guide to how to be holy, I always felt inadequate and rather hopeless about how I could properly be a saint and, for instance, mar martyr myself for Jesus as a grade schooler or do something where I could get an A-plus in sainthood, like starting an orphanage in my suburban Ohio township. And when I was at St. Gregory's, I was deeply moved and inspired by that fantastic cloud of witnesses and saints above my head traditional saints such as Teresa of Avila and Patrick of Ireland dance alongside Anne Frank, Ella Fitzgerald, Thurgood Marshall, Emily Dickinson, Stephen Hawking, and William Shakespeare, to name a few. Their unique and diverse interpretation of saints at St. Gregory's is amazing. They say, that they celebrate those whose lives show God at work, building a deep character to match the godlike image which stamps them as God's own from the start. It was a relief and a gift to see those who had cut across traditional boundaries of who could be a saint or not, and to have contributed so much these saints so much in their own unique way to the evolutionary growth of our humanity and to bring people deeper into knowing divine love. So on this feast of all saints in commemoration of the dead, I'm reminded of Barbara Brown Taylor's description of a saint. To be a saint, you don't have to be famous or perfect or dead. You just have to be you, the one of a kind, never to be repeated human being whom God created you to be, to love as you are loved, to throw your arms around the world, to shine like the sun. You don't have to do it alone either, Taylor says. You have all this company, all these saints sitting right here whom you can see for yourself, plus those you cannot all of them egging you on, calling your name and shouting themselves hoarse 
with encouragement because you are part of them. And Taylor says, and they are part of you. And all of us are knit together in the communion of saints, God's handkerchiefs dropped on the world for the love of Christ. In the Beatitudes that Jesus teaches in our gospel today, we hear some of the qualities of those who are blessed, who could be considered those soft cotton handkerchiefs in our lives, those who are humble in who they really are, those who courageously seek righteousness and justice, those who are merciful, those who are the peacemakers. At no place in these teachings does Jesus say, and you must be perfect, never make mistakes, never be afraid, or filled with doubt or anxiety. Never does he say that. So to be an everyday blessed kind of state that we celebrate in the Episcopal Church, you make certain choices while still being your very human self, prone to fear, anger, resentment, jealousy. We make choices to offer mercy, to try to forgive those who wronged us, choices to love our neighbor with whom we struggle to love by trying to put ourselves in their shoes. Especially in these COVID-19 days where we know how many folks are suffering from isolation and, and hidden mental health issues like depression or anxiety, addictive behaviors. We can choose to give grace to those whose behaviors upset us. And we give ourselves grace for how very difficult it is to be even one minute of a saint on some days, especially in these times, these times of COVID-19 and this week of the election. Still, we show ourselves mercy. We forgive ourselves for not measuring up to pre-COVID-19 standards for how we used to operate in our lives. And we take action when we can to one of, be one of the supported nearly saints of God to be the peacemakers in the face of violence and hatred, to be the one who stands up for Jesus's way of justice when our democracy might be threatened. And when we know it's in our timing, our personal timing, to help overcome evil with love. In this election season, our Episcopal Church has been supporting a way to practice, that's interfaith way, a bit of sainthood, practicing a bit of sainthood by circulating the prayer angels organization's pledge called With Malice Toward None. And this organization is made up equally of those who adhere to both red and blue values. And in this election time, they observe, whether jubilant or bitter about the outcome, Americans will be tempted to embrace the four horsemen of polarization, stereotyping, dismissing, ridicule, and contempt for their fellow citizens who voted the other way. The pledge is this, regardless of how the election turns out, I will not hold hate, disdain, or ridicule for those who voted differently from me. Whether I am pleased or upset about the income outcome, I will seek to understand the concerns and aspirations of those who voted differently and look for opportunities to work with people with whom I disagree. If you wanna take that pledge, it's on their website, which is braverangels.org. Now, I have to admit that before taking that pledge myself, 
I, the so unsaintly part of me, did not want to commit to it. The part of me that wanted to hold on to smugness about voting for the right candidate and to reserve my place of rightness in order to be disrespectful or distant or just cut off those who didn't agree. My better angel part of me reminded me of when I went to my job as a large, at a large hospital when I was a chaplain the day after the 2016 elections. And what an extraordinary range of emotions, including glee, shock, and outrage, were found everywhere I went. It's a huge hospital. And the suspicion and divisiveness was so palpable on every single floor I wondered if anybody could heal in that environment. In the days to follow, I saw and heard of those blessed ones. I saw them, those blessed numbers of nurses and other staff on every floor and unit who set examples of staying respectful with their colleagues and patients who'd voted differently. I can't say that the divisions didn't widen more after that day. What I do know is that a few folks can make a profound difference in making peace while also standing up for the values of respect and dignity. During this week, no matter how you vote, and please, please, please exercise your sacred duty to vote. Be kind, be tender with yourself. Then you can be tender and kind with your neighbor. These are frightening times for many people, for me, and maybe for you. Allow your loved ones and coworkers their feelings, whether happy, depressed, or outraged. Pray that we may be healed as a nation a culture and a community healed from our divisions and to be as much of a saint as we can to each other. And reach out to somebody who may have voted differently than you and offer a gesture of peace and kindness. Let us be that bit of a saint. to stand and recite the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not of one being of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she has worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
The prayers of the people for the election season. Loving God, creator of this world, who is the source of our wisdom and understanding, watch over this nation during this time of election. Help us to see how our faith informs our principles and actions. God, our creator. <laughs> We give thanks for the right to vote. Help us to hold this privilege and responsibility with the care and awareness it merits, realizing that our vote matters and that it is an act of faith. God, our creator. Guide us through this election as a nation, state, and community as we vote for people to do work on our behalf and on the behalf of our communities. Help us to vote for people and ballot initiatives that will better our community and our world so that it may reflect the values that Christ taught us. God, a creator. God, Help us create communities that will build your kingdom here on earth. Communities that will protect the poor and stand up for the vulnerable. Advocate for those who are not seen and heard and listen to everyone's voice. God, our creator. We pray for this nation that is deeply divided. May we come together for the common good and do as you have called us to do, to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you through creation. God, our creator. Help us act out of love, mercy, and justice rather than out of arrogance or fear. God, our creator. Lord, continue to guide us as we work for the welfare of this world. We pray for places that are torn by violence, that they may know peace. God, our creator. We pray for Trinity Church, Rockland, St. Luke's Church, Situate, Church of the Holy Nativity, South Weymouth, All Saints Church, Whitman, the Diocesan Convention. For those on our prayer list, Bob, Judith, Sharon, Anne, Jerry, Joan, Ellen, Jean, Ellen, Nancy, Lynn, Louise, Steve, Dan, Ed, Cynthia, Terry, Doug, Frank, and Samantha, and our shut-ins, Gil and Nancy. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, praying especially for Anthony DePuda, who passed away this week. At this time, we invite you to add your own petitions in the Zoom chat box, silently or aloud. Loving God, hope of the poor and source of all health. Look with compassion upon your creatures who suffer under the weight of this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Here. We pray for those enjoying a birthday this week, especially David Wilkes, Sophia and Eli Goslin-Smokey, 
and we bless and lift up those celebrating a wedding anniversary this week. As we come into stewardship season, we pray, O oh God, our loving creator and giver of all good gifts, that you bless our parish, strengthen our faith, and grant us the spirit of Christian stewardship so that we may give generously of our time, talent, and treasure to spread your kingdom here in our church and throughout the world. For this, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon Have us. us. Most merciful Father, Father in, your in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And on this feast day of all saints in commemoration of the dead, we will be offering this list of souls who have passed away in our uh, parish and beyond during this past year. After each name that I read, we will have a bell rung and I invite your prayers for their souls. Nancy Bosom. <laughs> Joan and Robert Coles. Samuel Dean. Anthony de Padua. The Right Reverend Barbara C. Harris. Louisa MacIver. John Murray. Martin Shannon. The Reverend James Woods. May the souls of all the departed rest in peace. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace. Everybody. So a couple announcements. This is stewardship season, and so we invite you to, uh, if you've been a member and, or would like to be a member, to uh, send in a pledge card or contact the office and let them know you'd like to make a pledge if you don't have a pledge card. You can also do it on WeShare, our electronic giving program that's on the website. We uh, are having a mission and outreach committee meeting today at 1130 after the coffee hour. So on the Zoom coffee hour, everyone is welcome. We invite you to stay after the worship service and join us. And uh, next Saturday is our convention for our diocese. And normally we would all be coming from all over Massachusetts and beyond to gather. But this year we're going to be doing it digitally. And um, our delegates for our uh, convention have worked hard already on res resolutions. So I'm um, not sure how it's gonna work for visitors online, but uh, stay tuned to our newsletter for the church. And if there's a link, we will send it to you. Um, also, if you want to be on our newsletter, you're new, this is the first time you're tuning in and you wanna see what we're about, please sign up on trinitymelrose.org and you can join in with our newsletter and get, keep up to date. I think that's the website, right? We have so many versions of it that I get confused of what the actual website is. So, and also this week, um, people have expressed a lot of need for uh, prayer and support. So every, pretty much every day this week, our cathedral downtown St. Paul's is offering a nightly prayer service, especially for uh, around the election. And then um, Thursday and Friday, I think they're gonna have additional uh, offering. So please check out their website, stpaulboston.org, 
And uh, there's also a national vigil, prayer vigil, especially with the Episcopal Church with our presiding bishop, Michael Curry. That information is in your newsletter from this past week. So today we're gonna to be offering again our spiritual Eucharist, which we'll be doing Holy Communion Rite B in an amended shorter form. And we'll be offering, uh, I won't be able to offer communion to folks uh, because of our guidelines for COVID-19. However, we invite you to meditate and pray with the consecrated elements that will be here on the Eucharist table. And we will say a prayer together uh, to honor that in taking other elements into our spirit. All things come of thee, O Lord, of thine own we have given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our lives and It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us. And together with them, receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people and your words spoken through the prophets and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, take, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming and glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. 
Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us come to this feast. Alleluia. So at this time, let's join together in the meditation prayer. Almighty God, our fast from holy communion does not arise out of any lack of devotion to you, but one of the love you have commanded that we have for one another. Yet we long for you in our soul, since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, unite us to you spiritually, open our hearts that we may be ever grounded in your love and confident in your eternal goodness. Amen. Let us join in the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier be in you and with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is 279 for thy dear saints. The blessing of God. May you go in peace to love and serve God in everyone you meet. May you be faithful, peaceful, joyful when you can, and remember to pray and vote. Amen. Amen.